Good. We're back here with Sean Taylor from um, Cornerstone Christian Counseling with some, uh, just a few quick questions for parents um, that have kids at their house because it, it creates a unique challenge. And so one of the biggest ones that came up from parents with kids at the house is kind of the obvious one, but really love your insight. Um, you've got kids and their schedules and the exhaustion that that brings and the relational, emotional stuff that that brings. Yeah. And then I need to care for myself and I need to nurture my marriage. Yes. And so what I see, I don't know if this is what you see as well, is it seems like people can um, make their, take, let their marriage take a second seat and focus on the kids for a season. Uh -huh. And so how do, you, how do you not do that? How do you avoid that? What are ways to nurture your marriage during the, the craziness of life? Yes, and the craziness of the COVID life right now. Yeah. One of the blessings that has come from COVID is that is limiting our ability to go out mm -hmm. and to do things like um, that we used to do, like all the sports is limiting, mm -hmm. you know, how, how many sports activities we take our kids mm -hmm. to. Uh, other types of activities, music, extracurricular activities. And what people are finding is, wow, I kind of like this in some ways. I like slowing down, but it's also making me uncomfortable as well. It's a double-edged sword. So actually seeing the blessing in slowing down, and I guess the lesson learned from that, I would say, is ensure that you are saying no to everything that you need to say no to in order to say yes to the one thing you wanna say yes to. So prioritize. In order to say yes to the most important things and make sure that you know what those are. And for you individually, for you guys as a couple, and for you as a family, what are the most important things that we really want to live, uh, live out in, in our life? And then, and then that will help us to decide what we need to say no to. So maybe we decide we're only going to be involved in one extracurricular activity uh, or two at most because our priority is actually having family dinners uh, three days a week. And uh, because the priority for us um, as a family is connectedness. While our kids are at home, we want our kids to, uh, we want to have conversations with them and, uh, and engage in conversations that help them work through their stuff and have honest relationships because after they leave, we want them to still want to come home, maybe not to live, <laughs> not a boomerang child. We want to equip them to be independent, right. but we want to have a relationship with them, you know, and in order to actually have a trajectory that leads to a continuing relationship with my child, I need to have these conversations that elicit friendship. You know, like one of the best thing, uh, uh, like the most inspiring things that I hear from parents, uh, older parents with, or I should say with older children who have moved out is when they wanna come home and they wanna hang out or they wanna go out to dinner. Um, I heard a, one pastor say, our number one goal as a parent, as parents was that our kids would want to come home would want to spend time with us, I should say, just in general, not come home, but actually spend time with us. Mm -hmm. And that was just a, it was a great long-term trajectory which ordered their priorities, allowed them to say no to all these things so they could say yes. So a practical example, like for Angie and I, we have said we, um, we will limit our children's activities to one uh, athletic activity and one non-athletic activity outside of school. And so, um, or one like musical or athletic activity, I should say. And so for our kids, it's a, a youth group, because um, uh, one of the, our kids, an uh, older one, is just now getting a youth group, and music. Like those are our two activities. And for the rest, we're generally saying no. Mm. <laughs> we have some exceptions here and there, but those are the exceptions. Mm. As a rule, we say no. Same thing with the youngest daughter, uh, or with our daughter, <laughs> younger so, or, uh, child. We, we say, hey, what is the one activity or the two activities? You know, one athletic or musical and then non-athletic or musical. And then we, we say, then that frees us up to then have family dinners because that's mm -hmm. a priority for us. Mm -hmm. And then we have to do the same thing with us as the adults. We have to limit our engagement. I have to limit how many clients I see in the evening. Um, how Angie and I both have to limit how or when we say no to work. 
and to stick with it. And it, that can be hard, sure. you know? So again, it's saying no to all these things so you can say yes to your top priorities. So yeah, so it seems like the process you went through is the marriage is, the marriage is important, but yeah. it, it was more than just my marriage is important or my, you know, being a parent is important. It's connectedness as a family is important. Yes. It, it seems like it's getting to the next layer and then it almost goes one more to say, so to accomplish that, we're gonna have dinners every week. We're gonna limit this. Yes. And so I'm thinking like with the marriage, um, what are some of the routines that you see? So like like date night is one that we've always heard. Mm -hmm. and, and it feels sort of like a double-edged sword that you go, let's have some routines that we just know if we do these, it's gonna accomplish the goal. And then also routines can be pretty unromantic at times, right? You know, but um, what are the routines that um, that that you've seen with um, with couples, especially when they have the kids, yes. that seem to still foster a healthy marriage? Yeah, and I, I love that. Um, just yeah, focusing on and the best gift. Maybe I'll put this out there: the best the gift that you can give to your kids is a happy, healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. And a happy, healthy marriage is by two healthy adults. So nurturing your relationship with God and your personal health will then help you then to engage with your spouse from a point of health. And we're not saying perfection. We're saying I am, I'm growing and I am healing and I am in cooperation with God and what he's doing in my life um, so that I can be in cooperation with God and what he's doing between us. And then, so again, sometimes Say, using that principle, what do you need to say no to in order to say yes mm -hmm. to things? Sometimes I need to say no to relational things in order to actually get right with, within myself, be healthy and healed myself. Mm -hmm. So that I can then say yes to Angie um, in our relationship. Sometimes I need to say no to the kids right. in order to say yes to Angie. So we need to say, actually we're not gonna have, um, like this night is, or this time is uh, our date time and uh, we're going to focus on connecting with each other. We're not going to talk about work. We're going to, um, and uh, because Angie and I work together, that's why we have to right. be able to set that aside. We're going to focus on our relationship and, connect, and getting to know one another more and, and enjoying an activity together oftentimes. Mm -hmm. We'll go for a hike, we'll go for a run, um, maybe a bike ride. Um, maybe we'll just go out for coffee. Um, she likes doing that. I like it shared adventures, so sometimes we'll alternate. Mm -hmm. So we'll say no to the kids in order to say yes to that time. But sometimes then we have to say no to all, everything else but time with the kids. And we say, okay, let's, so when we have family dinners, we do that at least twice a week. And we try to do it three times a week. Um, we need to say no to turning on the TV or no to shows in order to say yes to sitting around the table. Mm -hmm. And what then to, and all this is reverse engineering. We have the end in mind. The end is we want to look back at this stage in life and say, we did this well. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to make us believe that or conclude that? Well, when I look back on this time in life, I want to make sure that I did have family dinners and I did have dates. And I, uh, at those family dinners, I asked meaningful questions and we laughed a lot and we had and we worked through difficult questions and personal questions. So I want to prepare myself mm -hmm. with those questions right now. Same thing with dates. Um, I, I wanna make sure that we laughed a lot and we had meaningful conversations and we talked about personal stuff and we talked about lighter stuff. So I need to go into those dates with those, that intentionality. Mm -hmm. Same thing with my relationship with God. When I engage with him, I need to, to kind of have an agenda. Of how am I going to have that time be enjoyable um, and connecting and open myself up to how, what he wants to do within me. We could be intentional with each one of those points in our day. Yeah, and it seems like, it's just interesting because it seems like you, you gotta back up and just sort of think through some of that or life just sort of keeps going, keeps going. Oh, and yeah. it's ironically yeah. at like the most difficult time of life to just say, I just need to take an afternoon or I need to take a weekend. Yes. And so how do you make the time to do something yeah. like that? So, um, by actually making the time. So, and, and this is so hard. You, again, you have to say no to everything else in order to say yes to that one thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, like I had to, now I'm, I'm trying to follow this schedule where uh, once a quarter I get away on my own um, for a day, if not, an, uh, and uh, for a, a good chunk of that day. Um, every morning I have, 
Actually, I skipped that one. So once a year, I get away for an overnighter, if not twice a year. I'm trying to do it twice a year. It's mm -hmm. hard to do. And then I do a full day, once a quarter, and then every morning I try, or every day, I try to set aside some time there where I'm getting right so that I can be intentional with how I'm living life or else life is going to take me mm -hmm. and send me down its current, especially in our culture. Right. It's so fast paced. So we need to set aside time in order to ask the important questions. How do I actually want to live mm -hmm. my life? Mm -hmm. Not how does life want to direct me? Yeah. And then your spouse, you have, your spouse has to be, because like you're gone, Angie's got the kids. Yes. So your spouse has to say, I value this for you and I hope you value it for me. Yeah. So, yep, your dad's going to be gone for a couple of days. Trade and, off. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it, is, it is saying no to even your spouse and your kids. Saying, I'm saying no to spending time with you. And that's really hard. Um, and it's because I also love you and I want to bring to you my best as well. Mm -hmm. And then encouraging the opposite or the, or the reverse, yeah. doing for her what she did for you, you know, right. saying, hey, I'm going to take the kids for you. Um, where do you want to go for your overnighter? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's camping. For her, it's a nice hotel somewhere, right. you know. <laughs> right. And so, but that's the atmosphere that actually then can cultivate the del deliberate and intentional, clear-minded decisions, mm -hmm. which is what we're trying to get to. Because the culture, again, is inundating us and life is inundating us with things that want to grab our attention. But at the end of life, all of our life is about what we attended to. Are we going to allow our attention to be dragged this way and that? Like in scripture, it talks about like you're like a, like a wave tossed into and fro. Mm -hmm. or, and uh, what, we're, what he's saying is like he wants us to attend to him which means slowing down, getting away. Jesus did this regularly. He would, get, he would go sailing by himself. I love that when I read that. He got in a boat. It was a sailboat. He went sailing. I'm like, I'm going windsurfing because Jesus did it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, then and he went hiking. He went off into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He spent time camping. You know, because, and I think that this speaks to, it speaks to my heart at least. Mm -hmm. I need to get away. Yeah. And if Jesus did it, shoot. Maybe I could do it too. Yeah, yeah. That's, a good, that's a good word. And I think, I think one of the things very important that we started with here was um, the idea of I'm raising my kids. I want my kids, you know, I, I focus on them. That best gift we give them is that strong, healthy yes. marriage. That's something that it, even if we don't sit down and have a conversation with all the bullet points about our marriage, that's a thing that they, they, they see, they tuck away and is enviable. They want that someday as well. Yes. Yeah, as they say, like, faith, faith is caught, not taught. Mm -hmm. They're going to remember what they felt and observed more than what they heard. Right. They're, like, I barely remember anything that my parents said, but I sure can, I have pictures of them in my right. head of times when they conflicted and times when they embraced. And I really enjoyed those times that they embraced. Mm -hmm. And I want to give my kids that sense of security that came when I saw my parents doing that. Mm -hmm. And in order for my parents to do that, now I know they had to work through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and we, Angie and I, have to work through stuff between the two of us and within each one of us as individuals right. as well. Good. Big thanks to Sean from Cornerstone Christian Counseling. <laughs>